One question that I often get is something along the lines of, here are the sounds, the sound categories that I'm trying to classify between, and I can't get my classifier to converge or to be successful in classifying between these different sounds. So, you know, there's a lot of things that would be good to check uh, to make sure that the data you're showing to the neural network is the data that you, you know, is representative of the differences that you think you're going to be wanting to look for or that the neural network will be able to pick up on doing this training. So here's a little, some code that'll give you a sense of how to sort of do that. The sort of thesis of this is you have to know your data. You have to know like what is even in my data? What am I analyzing? What does it look like? Do these audio analyses re reveal differences that are going to be um, useful in determining, you know, differentiating between these different sounds? Oftentimes, the best way to do that is to plot your data. So the, the fluid plotter will be a great way to do that. In this example, I'm actually using a different plotter, one that I made before the fluid plotter existed. Um, it's it, The code is up on GitHub. You can go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. It has a lot of functionality in here that is really not necessary, but it it is a little bit more powerful in a few ways than Fluid Plotter, and you'll see why we'll use it today. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take these two sound files, the bass guitar example and the music box example, and because this is a stereo file, I'm just going to take the left channel. I'm going to strip away any silence using Fluid Buff Amp Gate so that I don't have any silence in the buffer that I'm going to analyze. And then I'm going to do my analysis and I'm actually going to make every single FFT frame a analysis. And that's because I'm imagining that I might be doing this classification with the MLP classifier. I might be doing it in real time later. And if I'm doing it in real time, probably what I'm doing is I'm taking snapshots of single FFT frames as my vector that I'm going to give to the neural network and try to classify. Uh, I could also be using fluid stats in there to do a little bit of smoothing or something. In this case, I'm just gonna take every FFT frame and call that a um, an analysis vector. So what I'm gonna do is for each of these buffers, I'm going to analyze the entire buffer for MFCCs, uh, the first 13, which is the default here, including MFCC zero. You know, you could certainly not. I mean, at this point in the process, what I'm doing is I'm really just trying to peek at the data and see, is this data gonna be useful to me or, or, or what data might be useful to me? So I'm just going to do all the analysis here. MCCs, spectral shape, uh, pitch, and loudness. And then for every frame in that buffer, in these analysis buffers, I'm going to copy out a single frame and then compile it into a data, into a, a data vector, into a buffer called point. And the way I'm doing that is there's a little function I wrote here, frame to channel, which says uh, first, Use fluid buff flatten to copy out a single frame, an FFT frame uh, of analysis out of these analysis buffers and flatten it into a buffer called flat. And then immediately after that, use buff compose to copy that flat buffer, that, that analysis into my destination, into my buffer called point and to start at a particular start frame with my arguments here. And so what that'll do for me is it'll make the MFCCs, uh, the 13 MFCC values will be uh, in my buffer called point, frames zero through 12. And then the spectral shape values, which is seven will be 13 through 19. So the first 20 here, 13 plus seven is 20, um, plus two and plus another two will be a total of 24 different values in my buffer called point, which then I will add to the data set and also make a label in a label set called training labels. Incrementing my counter to be able to make a new identifier. Um, and then, then we'll have our, our training data and training labels compiled here after that analysis. And then here, down here, the way we're gonna plot it is we're actually gonna use this plot XY color class uh, which I've added this method to from Fluid Dataset, which allows me to pass in training data dataset, training labels label set, and then it'll plot those for me. And additionally, I'm going to pass a header array, which I'm compiling here as a uh, header for each one of my columns in my dataset. So the first 13 will be MFCC 0 through 12. Um, and then I'm adding my spectral shape features, my fluid pitch features, and my fluid loudness features, the same order that I 
created them here and added them to my analysis vector here. So if we run all this, we get a plot and we can see that in our data set, we have analyses ranging from zero to 1862 um, and there are 24 columns. And so that, that's great. That should be all of our, um, all of our analyses here. And sure enough, these look like MCC values at the beginning, and then third to last one would be pitch confidence, which looks right. And then this last two would be some loudness measures, the loudness and true peak, which also look correct. So I think we have our uh, data set compiled here properly. And then here we have our label set, which has our base and the music box labels uh, corresponding to the identifiers in the data set. If we look at this plot, so what it's showing us is we can change what analysis is on the x-axis and the y-axis. And if we weren't, if we didn't pass in a, um, a label set here, we could also change the sort of color axis and what analysis is we're going to see on the color axis. Right now, this actually is going to do nothing because um, we passed in that label set. And what we're seeing here, the colors are actually the different categories that are in the label set. And I actually print them out here. Uh, let's see. RGB, so the bluey one is going to be the base, blue for base, convenient. And then the orangey one will be the music box. So now that we have our data plotted, we can see those categories. We can start to look at these different analyses and decide if some of these analyses are going to be more helpful than others for uh, distinguishing these two categories that we're trying to have the neural network learn to classify. Um, you know, we we might find something in here that's like, oh, wow, you know, pitch is really clearly distinguishes these categories. Or we might not find that. But we might we might also find some things where it's like, wow, it looks like mm, spectral spread just isn't useful at all. Or, you know, it looks like the spectral shape analyses tend to be very useful, but the pitch analysis is definitely not. So we're just trying to get a sense of like what even might be useful for us. Um, additionally, we might see that some things are just, uh, you know, noise, like completely not useful. So we could look at these MFCC values here individually. You know, usually we wouldn't look at or try to take these MFCC values in this way. But who knows, maybe we'll see some things that are interesting. I mean, this MFCC 8, I guess we're looking at if this is the x-axis. Yeah, MFCC 8 seems to really cluster these here along with MFCC 12. Not that I would read into that too much necessarily, but we can just start to notice what things are distinguishing. Um, if we try to go to loudness, let's just try that. Uh, loudness and loudness, oops, loudness and pitch confidence. So this is the y-axis, which is confidence. So the pitch confidence seems to be much higher for the music box and much lower for the bass guitar, generally speaking. So that's interesting. Uh, let's put spectral centroid on the x-axis and loudness on the y-axis because it's sort of like a spectral uh, a spectrogram. Um, could be, maybe that's useful. Mm. Spectral spread. This this is like a artifact of the analysis process, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Spectral skewness. This looks a little messy with uh, looks like roll off and centroid there. That's not helpful at all now, is it? This is our x-axis kurtosis. That doesn't look helpful. Skewness, also not helpful. Oops. Okay, so um, we could also try and look and see if there's some correlation between. So MFCC zero and loudness sometimes are correlated. Mm, not too much there. You know, you can start to peek at the data and just see what are you even seeing there? You know, what seems to be correlated, what seems to be not correlated, what seems to be distinguishing, what seems to be not distinguishing. Uh, this is all a useful way to look at it. So I think centroid and pitch confidence seem to be pitch actually, wait, Y-axis is pitch. Yeah, I mean, this makes a lot of sense, right? The bass guitars are all very low and the oranges are all very high. So, you know, pitch seems to be quite distinguishing here. Let's see if we can find another one that... Pitch 
pitch confidence also seems quite distinguishing. So pitch and pitch confidence seems like that would be a pretty useful, and that's just the pitch analysis too. Seems like that would be a pretty useful separation to make. Now, one thing that I'll, I noticed about this is the bass guitar has some pretty low notes, and here the default is going to be um, a window size of 1024, and we might want a window size to be larger to capture those lower notes in the bass more accurately. So we could do that. If we did that, we'd want to make sure to change that for all of these, because the way this analysis works is we need to expect that all of these uh, features buffers have the same number of frames in them. Do some plotting like this. Try to look at these different axes, see which analyses are most distinguishing, and then maybe that'll give you some insight about how to get your mm, training to converge better, or maybe why it's not converging. You might realize some things in the process of poking at the data that'll answer some questions or give you more questions to investigate. Um, and then you can continue learning more about your data and um, improving your training.